Greg Haggard's one loss to Pazienza the first time around last June. He's got a draw as well. A very tough customer. And for Vinny, he has one loss. He disputes it. It happened in Milan, Italy. He was stopped there. Here's how they compare physically. Here's how they measure up. They're anxious to go. We'll show it to you. Tony Perez keeping them apart here as this fight's about to begin. Haggard a couple of years older. Similar in height. They're both 135 to reach advantage for Pazienza by four and a half inches. They are ready to go. 15 rounds for the IBF Lightweight Championship. One thing Angelo Hauser did not do the first time was commit himself to an all-out attack, which he's capable of on Vinny. We'll see if he does it and does it early here. Well, I think he's going to be bounced away from both guys because I noticed that Pastor is red hot. He's sweat and he's looking to go, go, go. Hauser's not as sweating as much as he is, but I think they're going to go right at it. I alluded to the fact that it seemed that Vinny had a tougher time making the weight. It took more out of him getting to 135. That could be a factor, too. Well, I would think so. We interviewed him right after the weigh-in. He was sucking on a nutrient or something, a lot of liquid. This is a bad sign for the knee. He really had a tough time making the weight. It really takes the strength out of him. He's a showman, always was, going back to his amateur days. He's had showman, he's had Sugar Ray and Muhammad Ali. What do you think of this kid, this one? Well, this guy, this guy, God bless him, he's been passing into the because he's refreshing, he's good to look at, and he's a showman. He says that the uh, extra flamboyance, hot dog style, is a good shot by Howard. It doesn't take away energy from him. Many feel that it will, though. Depletes him. Well, the uh, one thing he did right now, pushing off on Hoggins, he's not going to be able to do that too many times, but Tony Perez ain't going to stand for that kind of stuff. One of the rules here in New Jersey is Hoggins bangs the body. He promised us he would do that in the corner. We'll review the scoring, which is not done by the referee, but the three judges. Ten point bus system. The knockdown rule is not in effect. I'd like to alert our local stations at the end of this round. We'll be taking the station break for midway through its schedule for 15. You know, you hear pre-fight build-up, but when a man like Howard tells you, I never wanted to hurt anybody in the ring until now, you get the feeling very seriously that there's genuine animosity he has spoken of. Hawk is looking very sharp early on. Pazienza looked like he's not sure of himself. He's not the same fluid type of style that we saw before. And this is a, a no-no for him because Hawk is going to start getting to him early. Oh, he's been with a hand down, bobbing the head, just getting out of way in time as he always seems to do. But how did a game get to the left into the body? That'll be an important blow for him. It's both hands for this second. Then he was finding. Takes the jab from Hoggins. And Pazienza right up because it's a dangerous shot. If Hoggins comes through with the right uh, counter, you're going to see Pazienza on the deck because that's a no no throwing an uppercut from that far out. It's five, 30 seconds now remaining in the first round. Both men missing. Hoggins are chopping right as Pazienza turned on the extreme. Pretty much as we indicated here, the first round action. There is a right by Haugen, ABC's Wide World of Sports featuring the IBF Lightweight Championship will continue right after this word from our local station. <laughs> round two in Atlantic City. Don Chevrier with Angelo Dundee as these men go 15 rounds or less, and there's a feeling here at ringside it may be less this time. Is stopping that good left now. Got some body work in on the first round. Yeah, I don't think uh, Tony Perez is going to let him get away with all this stuff because right away we had some pushing and shoving and brawling. He's going to warn both guys because they're both trying to do a number on each other. And what's happening with Hawkins? He's got a swelling over his left eye already. It's starting to show wear and tear. It was as the injury showed much of the wear and tear the first time. He's had that nose problem, Benny. Uh, it's a broken twice in the space of four weeks around in the last fight as early as the third round affected his breathing badly That's got to hold up for him now after the surgery. He claims it will it's a couple of good left jabs in Manager Lou Duva told me they had the nose cauterized uh, Cauterization helps a bit, but then it, it doesn't stop it from bleeding so the shots is getting nailed If it's going to bleed. It's going to bleed pretty soon Edge Haggard with a good left followed by the uppercut missing with a wild right, but he's taking it to him now and a Concentrated attack. Passes in to said he was going to brawl. And sure he is, he broke. Haggard turned around as Vinny goes over the top of his chopping right hand, but it's become a brawl here midway in round two. As advertised. He 
that exactly wasn't in the front of his chin. It was right behind the head. Algan now in this sequence scoring a little better, counter punching with both hands as you can see, but Pazienta scored very well about 20 seconds ago. Show a little bit of head work in there too. They're, they're both they're trying to do a number on each other. And, uh, God, it's going to be they're both going to bust each other up. Oh yeah, whatever it takes to win, no question about these two. Both have hurt the other in this round. Here's Benny taunting and saying, come on, here's the chin. Trying to frustrate Hagen a little bit. Hagen again digs from the body, brings the left up to the head. What do you think is going to go 15? I, I have my doubts. Maybe not five. As Tazzy Angel claims he could win it in five. Here we go either way. So much can happen between these two. It's so suddenly here's Alvin now with a good right. Pat Benny with the gloves down, shakes his head at him. Just seconds to go. And a exciting second round. <laughs> round three. I heard Lou do that. You got this here. Nothing there. Nothing there. You're trying a little too hard. You gotta go out there. You gotta jab. You gotta slip. Just do what we've been showing you. Okay? Hey, Vinny. Same thing I thought. You hear? He didn't want Vinny getting away from the fight plan. He wants him to jab and move now, not get into the brawl because Diva deems that very dangerous. Indeed, it could be against Hogan. Well, Tony Perez had to go back to both corners and warn both corners, both fighters, because they're both doing a number on each other. I think it's going to, the, the ball's going to get worse. They, they're just, they're into it, and they're looking to do a number on each other. Both just settle down and fight their fight. Both very anxious to prove something here in the early rounds. And what they have proven is they can put on an exciting show, but how about the welfare of 15 rounds lasting that long, having gotten this kind of a start? The other thing that concerns me is this, this ring, the canvas is loose. And what happened? There's plenty of bounce in the middle. There might be a board missing for his Pazienza corner. Because when they get in that side of the ring, it's like a trampoline motion there. Going effectively with that left hand in particular in this round. Yes, sir. Canvas really very stringy as you point out, Angela. Right, that, that takes the, the, the bounce out of your legs to a, a soft ring like that. This is that slight padding. The best you can have is a safety padding they got underneath. Constantly, that jab from Haugen lands on the nose of Pazienza with that right to follow. Bloodletting in this fight, say like you had in Providence, I assure you the, the doctor Doggett will step in here because they won't allow that much bleeding and, and that kind of uh, cut closed eye. They're very uh, conscientious about the medical situation here. Larry has and prides himself with that stuff. After two granite rounds of dwelling, they are for the most part boxing here in this the third round. Alden, boxing whip, has the end of the stinger to the first fight, the Vinny had greater hand speed. That didn't turn out to be true. Alden's hand speed looks even better this time. Alden's a very good counter puncher. He's deceiving. When, when Pazienza rushes in, a lot of times his hands go and his body don't follow him, and therefore he gets off balance. That's what happens to him. That's why he grabs around the head so he gets off balance. That's right. Judges should take note that while Pazienza initiates much of the action he does there with the left, it is Haugen's counter punching that can be very, very effective as it was in fight one. Ten seconds to go in the third round. They box their way through it. Could switching to Geico really save you 15% or more on car insurance? Two were brawlers, one was a boxing match in the third round, and he breaks corner between rounds. What's doing good? You're starting to show it. You don't show it. You're going to the safety zone, and if you go down the safety run, come over with a right hand or a left uppercut. You understand? Okay. You're doing great, baby. Those jabs are working. You're going to set him up with those hooks. All these rounds are yours. Well, Angelo said as that round ended, he thought the Pazienza had indeed suffered more trouble with that nose. 
Yeah, what happened, interesting thing, I was clocking the other corner, and they're telling Pazienza to turn southpaw on Ogden. That could be a bad mistake because you turn southpaw, that left hook comes into play. And Ogden's got a great looking counter left hook. does Angelo Dundee look right now? Well, I got it 2-1. Uh, I got Pazienza up. I got uh, Hagen winning that last round. I just, I've got it uh, just as close, but the other way for Haugen. So we're back to where we were in Providence again, the disagreement of ringside. That's the kind of fight it was. It's in the eyes of the beholder, and I'm, I'm a bad judge. At least these are tough guys to score. Yes, it Believe is. Me, tough to judge. See, Vinny, just going off balance like that, Don. When he jumps in like that, he goes off balance. Because what happens, he got quick hands, but the legs don't follow. It's a problem he's got. When Hagen was in the corner, we're taking care of that swollen eye with the end swell. It's a piece of steel they use to, to keep the swelling down to wait for closing the eye. As the end said, he would like to finish this in five, and then Winky said, I really don't uh, fancy the idea of going 15 with this guy, would you? Well, I don't I don't see it. I don't see it. Good right. I don't see a stoppage, but both guys are not great bangers. Haugen certainly has the reputation of being the greater of the two in that category. There's a good right. Pazian's a cotton flush with it. The ends are getting more meaningful blows in than on the first five, certainly in the early stages. Vinny right now is fighting Hoggins' fight because the exchanges like that, Hoggins got the shorter arms, the shorter punches, and he's catching some real good counter shots. That's why he never wanted him to box as he did finally in the third round. But there's been some boxing, some brawling. But great action here as this fourth round winds down. Hagen told you he's going to use that trip hammer. Ah! Round five is underway. Scheduled for 15, the IBF Lightweight Championship at Pazian's acclaimed at home in Providence from Haugen in that controversial decision last year. His nose is bleeding. He's holding out of the ropes. That's illegal. Can't do that, but he does it frequently, Pazienza. Nose is really starting to go now. Also, I noticed he's, he's having trouble breathing, and he's having a swelling over his right eye. Because he can't breathe, he blows his nose, and the swelling gets bigger. And it's precisely why Vinny wanted to end this early if he possibly could. Against his corner's instruction, trying to brawl his way to that end of the first couple of rounds. He's paying the price, you see. Oddly enough, Hawkins' left jab has taken his toll on that nose. Because he throws a trip hammer left jab, it's like a counter shot, and Pazienza was running into that jab. They're talking to each other. Hawkins taunting him now as more blood appears in the face of Pazienza. Well, they didn't do too much slip service before this fight, but they're doing them in the ring. Plus, fighting a heck of a fight. You think they were at least cocked out by now. That's not the case. There's the jab you talked about, the very effective jab with the left hand of Greg Hoggins. Hoggins methodically goes about the business of wearing Pazienza down, literally. That nose is really bothering Pazienza because he's having trouble breathing. And that's why he's touching it and moving it. But see, once he blows his nose hard, he's going to close that right eye. Because once you have a hematoma on the eye, it closes on it. And that's what's happened. It's purple underneath, and it's purple on top. Yep, Vinny is a mess early. Barely a third of the way through the scheduled 15 rounder. The legs are still there, still dancing. But he's got another 10 rounds plus of breathing through his mouth. I think Vinny went too hard too early. Might have. Gets a good attack off here, though, but it is not sustained. The left constantly in his face from Haugen. And the nose is really looking brutal. I mean, the bleeding is getting worse, and I think it's going to bother his breathing. Haugen smiling, laughing at him. Todd again.
So Greg has got a lot to say with both hands and with his mouth. But he was so saying, far he's backing it up in this uh, round. He was saying that before the fight down, he was telling us he's going to punish him. He's going to beat him up. He's really mad at him because he's the challenger and the other guy he claims has got his job. No question, Haugen here on a mighty important mission to him. And you get the sense that this bout is starting to turn very much in Greg Haugen's favor. As round five winds down here at the convention center. Gonna try an old sand trap shot here. A little more dirt than ball. Here is round six. Don Chevrier ringside with Angelo Dundee. Pazienza, they can't contain that blood coming from what again is a broken nose, obviously. And Dr. Doggett was in the ring, going to between the rounds, checking the nose out, and he spoke to the referee, Tony Perez. What he told him, I didn't know, but I think he's going to tell him to keep his eye on his nose because he's broken. How could have promised that this will be Denny's last fight for quite some time? In fact, he even quoted statistics that his opponents are sub-500 after they fight Greg. And Angelo, Denny's dad's got to be concerned. Because he knows what his courage his son had to put up or come up with last time. To go 10 rounds and 12 with a broken nose. Almost as bad this time. Then getting thumbed late, the eye closing. So it's deja vu, not in a positive sense, but Vinny tries to pin Hogan in the corner here, can't sustain the attack. Hogan definitely feels he's got everything under control, but that's a no-no. He's got to keep up the pace and keep doing what he's doing, and go to Pazienza. It's a mistake to let him get on the ropes and back up. Good counter punching there. Pazienza tried to shake that off as Hogan goes down to the body after a solid combination up top. Really keeping that jab, popping it. And Pazian's having trouble breathing. When he went against the ropes that last time, he took a deep breath. Like he can't get nothing actually going through his nose. Oh, he simply breathes in the mouth, and that wears you out. And while it is unpleasant to mention, it should be stated, too, that he is obviously swallowing blood as he was in the first fight, and that can't do you very much good. Pazian's a member in the first bout, though. He showed so much courage, he came back to look very impressive. 10, 11, 12, the late stages. Let's what see if he can do that again. What he did wrong this time, he started at too fast a pace, so that means he's going to get tired quicker. And the wrestling now resumes as Vinny first drags him and hits him with the left hand, and Perez cautions him for that. Not an easy fight to score, it's certainly not an easy fight to referee. No, I'm surprised that Perez is letting uh, Pazienza get away with that. He's holding it behind the head and wrestling like that. You know what to expect with these guys coming in. One should never question the courage or heart of a Vinny Pazienza, despite his condition. It is getting late now in round six. Stay with us. <laughs> round seven, and here's Lou Duva and what he had to say between rounds to Vinny Pazienza in the corner. This guy taking his jab here, Vinny. You're not, you know what's matter? You're trying, you're so intent on getting to the guy, you forget your fight plan. Understand? So get in here. Get in there and let's start slipping, slipping, stay right there and start countering. But what you're doing is you're pulling out. They're doing a good job on Pazian's is known as the corner. Uh, Ace Marauder, what he's doing, he's getting cotton and he's putting the adrenaline 1 1000, he's squeezing them in there without using two tips, which is very smart. This way, you plug it up. And he's doing the best job trying to stem the flow of blood. But I don't think there's no way he's going to stem that because he's going to bleed every time he gets a few punches on the nose. Like trying to put a band-aid in a volcano. That's what it is. Because nose is broke again, definitely. This is for the IBF World Lightweight Championship. And it certainly is the long-awaited rematch that we expected. The intensity and the animosity between these two has been displayed in the ring right from the opening bell. 
And the pressure about Pazienza, can he hold together physically? The answer to the negative early on, it's uphill for him now. Well, now, they're, they're both in great shape. Well, they, they, they both trained and they got in the best shape possible. I just think it's a, it's a terrible thing, though, if this kid has this problem with that nose right from the get-go. He won in the face of adversity the last time, but can he do it again? We'd like to remind our local stations at the end of this round, we'll be taking a station break. Now they're looking very calm, very deliberate. Pazienza scattered, frustrated and anxious appearing, as he should be in this situation. He's falling behind round by round on my cards, really through five and six, as I gave the Hogan Angelo. I got it the same way. It looks like Hogan is really fighting like the challenger. I think he's looking to get his job back. It's like that's what he told me. He's very serious about reclaiming this title. Was well, the only loss, as we told you? It was controversial. It was very close. Although unanimous. Hogan gets the right off twice now at the end of that exchange. Less than 30 seconds to go in the seventh round. The jab consistently in Pazienza's face. That's what has broken the nose again. Inside 15 seconds, nearing the halfway mark of these bout, and both of them have got to be very tired. ABC's Wide World of Sports featuring the IBF Lightweight Championship will continue after this word from our local station. Round eight is underway as the halfway mark is here in the scheduled 15 rounder for the IBF lightweight championship. Haugen stinging Pazian's early with a consistent use of the jab. You see him breaking his nose, certainly enough blood from the nose to support that. Handicapping, handicapping Vinny all the more. Pazian is trying to revert back to boxing. Uh, I think he extended too much energy in those few, few rounds. He should have you know, been doing this early on, try the box. And maybe he wouldn't, wouldn't have sustained the broken nose that quick. Now his trainer, Lou Duda, all over him after the first couple of rounds for not sticking to box. He came out and did box in the third, but it, it's been back and forth with it. Perhaps forced back and forth by Haugen to a great extent, too. But falling into the Haugen trap. Hawkins doing everything he said he was going to do. The jab is going to be heavier. He's hitting him to the body better with that right hand. He's doing everything he said he was going to do. So he did his homework in the, in the last fight. As he ends his not fought since their first meeting last June, Hogan had won in December, a tune-up that ended early in Las Vegas in his day. Hogan is one of like to train, likes to be in the ring frequently. Says now, though, he's the best shape of his career. Such a cardiovascular training program the last six weeks, and that's reflected by what we've seen so far midway in this eighth round. Actually, he did the cardiovascular stuff because Pazienza said he'd done it the first time, so he wants to be on a par with the guy, and he did the same thing. Short right hand. He'll throw a wide angle right at you. Gives you the impression that he thought he might have been a southpaw way back when, but never was. No, but it never was. I asked him if he was a southpaw when we had that meeting with him. But he claims he never was. But he's quick handed because he played shortstop when he played baseball. That's why he got such quick hands. But the mistake he makes in close, he brings both legs together like he's doing now, and he gets hit very easy because he has no mobility in his legs. It's a no-no to do that. Right, 30 seconds now in the eighth round. Uppercut. And a big right by Vinny. I'll get there to counterpunch with him. Ray Conlon is never hard to find. He's always right there for him. Less than 10 seconds to go now in the eighth round. As they pick it up, heading for the bell. Round nine for the IBF Lightweight Championship held by Vinny Pazienzo. One from the man on the left now, Greg Haugen in Providence last June the 7th. But Haugen working intently on getting that back. 
Vinny showed a lot of late round courage to win that championship from Hive in the first time. Kenny must do it again. How's he doing so far, Angelo? Well, I got this fight 5 3 Hobby so far. It's, it's going back and forth. They're doing a great job on Vinny in the corner, stopping that blood every round. But naturally, it starts up again once you catch a few more punches. Every round, it opens up very early. It did happen early. That suspected broken nose of Pazienzis. Then in rounds five, six, and seven, Hogan really took charge. Then he fought back better in the recent eighth round. I'm surprised Joe Perez is not warning that that grabbing, pushing, and shoving around the head. He hasn't warned that once. I'm surprised he's not getting on that. Uh, heads are together, and elbows are up there, everything between these two. Heads way down there. Here is Pazienzo with a head driving Hogan back. Good hard right coming in. He caught him coming in. How did this? As he enters, takes that off, keeps on coming. He's back to the brawl that Diva wanted to keep him out of. Finney just got his, his left side cut also. Uh, from that right hand, it could have been a butt. That's why I don't like that Russian in his grabbing. Perez should control that because he's, these youngsters are going to really open each other up with the head. Uh, he's face to air above the eye, just bumping on the shoulder of Greg Hogan to midway in this round. So Vinny, to put it simply, is a mess. He tries to go back to the boxing, the jabbing and the moving. Again, it is the jab that Hogan established so early that it's been such a, an important aspect of his plan, his game today. I tell you, he's starting to show a lot of wear and tear, and not as much natural as the last fight. Last fight, it, it looked horrible. But he's starting to show wear and tear early on, and here we are, round number nine. Let's just set the record straight. Vinny has never been in danger of going down, but uh, he's had the handicap of the broken nose, the breathing problem. Now the eye cut to contend. Left cut eye over the left. His right eye is starting to close like it did last time. How good does it knock that many people out? He will wear them down, win by a TKO. And you have evidence of that in the formation here today in this battle. Good use of the jab again by Haugen. Yes, seconds left in round nine, scheduled for 15. And again, one little lick after the bell. That's the customary between these two. To get my buddies to help me move, I picked up Pizza Hut pizzas for just 10 bucks each. Those were the only boxes he... First punch landed in that round was a counter right hand by Hagen and Pazienza ran right into it. Uh, Pazienza's legs aren't, aren't responding to what he wants them to do. He wants to get in and out and he's not being able to do it. He's running into punches. He's capable of preventing that uh, stiff left jab from coming through, and I emphasize the word stiff. Well, you know, that's where we go to think about the reach being such a phony barometer. There's a guy Hagen got shorter arms and still beaten to the jab. So it's the positioning of the feet. Oh, the pity has dropped that right hand from time to time, breaks it up, takes the right there, takes the left that follows. How good apart from a pretty good eighth round by Pazienza on my card, has been dominating since the fifth. In great Howard's corner, George Chaveras, his trainer, looks ahead of the action. And he's got to be satisfied with what he's saying. The Pazzi ends it out, tried to pin Hagen and hold him there, but Hagen kind of punching his way back to the center. Pazzi ends it landed a real good body shot, and it bothered him. That left hook to the body. Took the legs out from under Hagen also. He felt it. Midway in the 10th round. the two, Haugen has been to the body more frequently than Pazienza, but he's changed that here in this round. Left eye starting to close also, uh, Ron, because uh, I think he's blowing his nose. It's really creating a hematoma in both eyes. He claims he got thumbed around the 13th round the last time. That's when it closed up on him. Couldn't see a thing for two rounds. I don't think it could have been a thumb because these are attached thumbs. They use the attached thumbs in the other fight also. 
It's the constant pounding of Zenith, you figure, right? <laughs> there is constant pounding now from both sides. As the end all over Haugen, since he did hurt him earlier with a good left in the body. Trying to build upon that. As in the first bout, Pazienza woke up around the 10th round. He's done it here again today. In boxing and ankle, it's what you call sucking it up. Pazienza really sucking it up and really carrying it to him. I mean, he's paying the price, but he's accomplishing something. He's getting full value for that payment. At least here in this 10th round. Interesting fight. You never know between these two. Stay with us. is fast and furious they're both missing shots and they're both trying to nail each other but they're not doing no good in that exchange as he ends all over him again with a wicked left hand turns him around drives that right to the body he is furious now in his attack of greg hoggett Vinny pazienta is going for broke dr doggett went into the ring and told him probably he's going to stop the fight at the third visit by the doctor into the ring oh pazienta takes a big left Square on the nose now, got shaken by that as Hogan comes after him. Vinny Pazienza just got hurt. I think he's letting it all hang out. He did. But he understands they may stop the fight. He is a desperate young fighter at this stage. The 11th round, trying to retain his title, prevent Hogan from taking it back. We got a better fight than last time. You called it. Great fight. It is a better one, even than the last one, which was great. Finney's really hurt from that nose. Any little tap is bothering him. I think they went out for broke the beginning part of that round. I agree. And he didn't go for broke because Hogg's a real tough hombre, just like Pazienza. You don't take him out just like that, but Vinny let it all fly. Haunted by the presence of the doctor in consultation with a referee between rounds by his third visit up there. Midway in the 11th round. And they have thrown six rounds worth of punches in this half round already. Well, the, the oddity's been naturally the boxing ability of Hagen. Out box Pazienzo with that left jab, which he said he was going to do. Hagen has really been equal to him in terms of any strategy Pazienza wants to initiate. Cut now up beside the eye, side of the head of Pazienza, the nose, of course, bleeding. No, I think Pazienza has a cut on his head also. Yes. That's from the banging of heads. I think he's got a cut on the side of the left side of his head. That's from the bangy of the heads. In there. Yes. And I'm side surprised Luke Perez didn't stop that kind of stuff because that's a no-no. Both men have certainly been hurt during the course of the afternoon. Amazing that neither has gone down. Knees are buckled, but they hang in and come back for more furious action. Oddly enough, Hogg has got blood on the side of his face, but I don't know if it's his or Pazienza's. Maybe transferred. They simply refuse to let up. Here in Atlantic City, especially the commission that they have here. History has again repeated itself through the 10th and 11th rounds. Big ones for Pazienza the first time around. He has scored well, and I would give him the last two rounds. But he's got some more catching up to do. He's got some survival to contend with, too. He's got to hang around just for the next four rounds and be effective at the same time. See that white film of... Uh stuff over that left eye that Ace Murata uses, that's called Avakin. It's a loud, it's a coagulant, and it stops the bleeding. It does a good job. And Ace Murata is a real cracker jack to stop and cut. But a broken nose, forget about it. Can't do much about that once it happens.
absolute war between, between these two. Pazin's got nailed a heck of a right hand counter, and it really hurt. Now, I don't know. I think blood's coming from his left ear. I can see it right now, and I think it's where it's coming from right now. Well, that's a bad sign. He just got hit a real right, tough right hand shot. Yeah, he's taking a lot of punishment yeah. right now. His yeah. combinations are all getting through. Yeah. Look at his heart, how he dances, fights back. <laughs> No bigger heart than a fighter's heart. They're special. They're different. I mean, they're really tremendous. I don't know how Paz is staying in there. I don't either. These two made for each other. Now, Vinny coming back and scoring halfway through the 12th round. Algan knows he had a mental lapse by his own admission late in the last fight. It might have cost him a decision. Or he can't afford to do it again here, but here's the same story. A hurt Pazienza coming at it with all he has. Pace is slowed down here, and he should have slowed down a couple rounds ago. But this is the good, proof of the conditioning of both fighters. Algon now starts to score almost as well again late in this round. I'm pushing. I'm pushing now. You notice where that little shove, the way he went off balance, Pazienza? That's a show that, that he's got not too much gas. Passion by referee Perez for hitting late. That's been done after breaks and after rounds almost from the outset. Nothing new. Pass. So it is getting late now in the rematch for the IBF Lightweight Championship. Vinny Pazienza has been hurt. Nose broken early again as it was in the first fight. Difficulty breathing. Cut beside the eye. Battling Greg Howard who won his championship back so desperately. here in this round at least has stalled the tremendous oh. momentum. It's just a good old-fashioned hockey body check. That was a... And that'll do it for round 12. And now I'll turn it over to the Gecko. Ah, oh, thank you, sir. As we all know, Guy Go has been... Championship. Greg Highland appears to turn the corner nicely in this rematch. Pazienza, with all the heart in the world, trying to come back and score a dramatic victory in the late going. I'll tell you, it is a little Pazienza trying to get in the ring, uh, trying to, you know, tell his son, come on, come on. And uh, the first time in a long time I've had two angels in one arena. <laughs> one of them clearly more actions than the other right now. That is the father of Pazienza. The end of that round, referee Tony Perez went over and warned Pazienza for pushing, because that was a right shoulder block that he threw at Hagen. Pazienza, an anxious father, watching his son play catch-up the way we see it here in the final round. I tell you, he's a courageous man, because I, I would think twice before I'd watch my own son. And they, that shows the medal of, the, of his dad. Well, his brother Louise had the right idea. We saw her earlier say that she won't watch it live. She might see it later. Uh, Angelo Pazienza is a remarkable guy. And so is his son, Vinny. Oh, forget about it. Guy's a champion. He's showing it in more ways than one, and we don't know how this is going right now. Title's in jeopardy, and he's fighting like it. There's a cut beside the ear of Hauga now, the left side, which appears to be his. But not a problem for him at this stage, midway in the 13th round. Got to keep him at bay with those flicking punches that come up short. Taking wicked combinations again now, all getting through from Greg Hauga. Style, the showmanship is still there, even though he is hurting tremendously, Pazienza. This is an out-and-out -out brawl. They're both taking shots out of nail on each other. A steadier guy naturally is hot. Well, he fights like that all night long. Out of almost nowhere came Pazienza to playing the 10th and 11th round. How can I have winning the 12th? Here they are in the 13th with how the way I see it, Angelo, still holding the lead. And he's using the ropes again to dance his way out of danger. 20 seconds to go in the 13th round. Out to the body, then the uppercut. He brings it up north with the right hand. 
Forcing Pazienza to miss now more frequently with just five seconds to go on the 13th round here in Atlantic City. Haugen and Pazienza coming out for the 14th round. Here's where it all turned the last time in the first bout. Pazienza simply got more done in rounds 14 and 15 than Haugen, who by Greg Jordan mission had a medal lapse. I doubt we'll see that again. Haugen has come back to win 12 and 13 on my card, Angelo, and leads by a round or two the way I see it. Yeah, I got Haugen a couple rounds ahead, but, you know, that's only we're not judges. Now, the whole thing with this round, Hagen knows that he lost those last couple rounds and lost the fight. So he's trying not to let that happen again. Last time Hagen was concerned for his personal welfare and that of his wife and friends at ringside of Providence. He was thinking more how he would get out of the arena, especially if he won. He does not have those same problems here now, real or imagined in Atlantic City. is keep a game determined champion off it as Pazienza makes a desperate late bid here to retain this title he took from Hagen last June 7. Pazienza's been hurting Hagen down below. Every time he goes down below, uh, it takes the legs out from Hagen. He's been hurting him with real good left hooks to the bottom. I don't know why he's not throwing more than because he hurt him early on. I think Haugen, too, has made Pazienza feel shots to the body, but they go back to head-hunting, don't they, after being successful down below. Halfway through the 14th round. A, a right-hand shot to the body is playing havoc with Pazienza. He also hit him with a right-hand counter when he runs in. Pazienza digs a good left to the body of Haugen. That's the place he's hurting Haugen. Haugen trying to contain him and almost push him through the ropes. Haugen almost did a good number there by almost pushing him out of the ropes. There are the jabs again on the right pass. The answer says, nope, no harm done. Wild right, raised Haugen. That's a body shot again with a left hand by Pazienza. They're both going downstairs. 30 seconds to go on the 14th. How can they possibly keep up this pace? Unbelievable display by two superbly conditioned boxers who want this championship so desperately. Haugen with both hands scoring late in the round. Boy, that's tough when a guy hits a guy with a Sunday punch and he says, no, no, it didn't hurt me. <laughs> yeah. You know, as Duba told Pazienza, it's all going to fly here in this 15th and final round. Both corners did a real good job. Made both fighters aware, this is it, baby. This is the last round. So they're both going to go for broke. possibly sustain it. Fighters are tremendously conditioned people. There's no better conditioned athlete than the fighter. These two in particular. Alga now goes to work with both hands. Crisply bringing them home to the high guard of Pazienza. Vinny Wild with a right. Tries the uppercut for a lead. Tried virtually everything here to take Hagen down. This is what was not one of uh, Perez's good nights because he didn't control this fight like I thought he would. But he's a top-class referee. But he, he let too much get away from both guys, button, peeling, pushing down, and grabbing the ropes. The pass, he had to charge out of the corner and put the shoulder into him and then try to land the right hand. Midway in the round, takes two solid shots from Haugen. As Haugen backs him up for the ropes now and goes to the body. Show 
And indeed, yes, the action here even better than the first time around up in Providence last year. Remarkable these guys are going this 15-round pitch. Similarities. Pazienza's nose broken early. Breathing troubles developing early. Eyes getting puffy. The difference is this eye is not closed on him this time. He's here to give it all he has in the final couple of rounds. Haga now chasing him with a right hand around the ring as Vinny nods at him, comes back for more. There will be stories of hard and courage throughout the Olympics starting next Saturday in Calgary, but they will be hard pressed to match what we have seen here today. I want to thank ABC for giving me a great seat. This has been a great fight. Oh, really. I wouldn't want to miss this one. This has been a great one. 15 seconds to go. decision. Judge Stuart Winston scores it 147 to 138. Judge Gary Merritt scores it 147 to 138. And Judge Lynn Carter scores it 145 to 140. For the winner and new IVF lightweight champion, Greg Hogan. <laughs>